Dr. Mahir Kayyum to this panel. So, what do we do? We agree. We live 
of Pakistan, a lot of us think that every child must attend school. When health care is performed, where clean drinking water is not a luxury, and where communities are vibrant and self sustained. So that's a dream, but how do we bring that dream into a platform? This is what some of us call good work. So we form this organization with its mission to facilitate a non-political movement. And I emphasize non-political because we are totally not government. Governments come and governments go. And many have come since 1997. We do not affiliate with governments. We work independently. So it's a non-political movement for positive social change. But unless this whole society changes, nothing changes. And community empowerment through mass literacy. I'm reading this story, it sounds like repetition, but we have thought about it, and unless we pay attention to each one of these components, we are not going to be able to make a difference. And it's the difference of Pakistan. It's enhanced quality of education, by enhanced quality. Because just going to school and going through the growth mechanism, where you memorize everything and spit it out, doesn't work. So it has to be quality of education that makes a difference. It makes a difference being truly educated and not just with a piece of paper that doesn't do any good. And the universal finding health care and grassroots economic development of health care, unfortunately, even is a problem in the United States. The access to health care is really uh, quite pathetic if you compare it to these countries. So going forward, what we have uh, done with Human Development Foundation is to not focus on one component. So you can make schools and children can enroll in the drop out and not finish their education. If the health is not taken care of, people will work. If you don't have the awareness that none of this happens, and of course, without clean drinking water, a lot of people die unnecessarily. So what it means really is that in order to develop a community, we must have this healthy farm approach that we call the Asian holistic model. So unless you get into the community and take care of each one of these components, we found that uh, you basically can and do waste millions and millions and billions of dollars. And in fact, this was a study uh, a few years back where the USA had determined that with all those billions of dollars being pumped in some of these third world countries, the, uh, the result is really not accomplished at all. Neither the poverty has been alleviated, nor the uh, state of health has improved. And worse, uh, and I don't know if anybody has actually said that, the terrorism that has been bred in those that part of the world is, is, is a factor that arises from lack of education and poverty. Poverty breeds a lot of ills, and one of them is the so in the end, if we want to create a community, we must really uh, have this multi pronged approach. So with that, this is just a map of Pakistan. I'd just like to point out that we have our projects in all four provinces, but I like to add the AJK. So we do have one as I actually call it. So we really try to reach out to most of the community uh, and the uh, Another thing that I must point out since a lot of the new human development uh, foundation, the human development index. Uh, how many people know what human development index is? You do? That's wonderful. The human development index is something that was actually defined by the Pakistan government movement. And we defined it uh, whereby you can actually measure the uh, state of development in any given country or community. And it's a scale of uh, the, the best countries would be one, and the worst would be zero. So the, uh, the, the countries that are at one highest scale of the human development index are the scale of the countries. And Canada is not part of it, I think Canada is not part of it. The United States is really low. You have rich people in the United States, but you have some very poor people in the United States. 
people who don't have access to it, the United States is not a good country to look at human rights. Uh, but the interesting part that some of you, I think, most of you don't know, I don't know, I think these are people for that. The Human Development Index in Lahore, you're from Lahore, Human Development Index in Lahore is uh, 8.3. 8.3. That's the same as in Spain and France. So the way people live in Lahore is as if they were living in Spain and France. And not that people know that because we don't do that. But the Human Development Index in Balochistan and in Sindh and in some of the rural areas of uh, Punjab is 2.3. 2.3. That is almost the same as South Sahara and uh, Sudan, so you can. So that's what we tell it. They have no clean water. It's open defecation, they don't have bathrooms. They don't. And that has been considered as one of the major defining factor in, uh, in that of education, in that of basic uh, So that actually has been uh, one of the but the Canadian run for 2.3 billion that is just focused on the sustainable environment and open up the goals to get uh, the Indian environment. But anyway, moving right now, this is a slide that I like to show because a lot of people want to know. If they relate to this organization, how much is going to go to the program services? And I'm happy to report are able to send to spend 8-9% of your budget to for program services. The program services that you want. And I think after the presentation, you can ask me more specific questions about the financial aspects, because a lot of people have questions about that. But the money based model is raised here in the United States. And there is some grants that have been procured. And I think all the money basis we have the program is in Pakistan. The money is transferred there and over there we have staff on the ground. So we don't have a money as a part of We have staff that is uh, accountable for what they do right now. So it's not easy, right? Just you raise money, you send it there, what we do, how we make things happen, what is the mechanism? The mechanism again is not to make a big school, a beautiful school, that no child will attend, no teacher will show up for. So the young generation, the second generation, uh, I'm sure has a lot of ideas about what's wrong with Pakistan. And there are hospitals in Pakistan. Where, uh, there are vacancies for nurses, we can't have nurses, we don't have hospital people, so we want to do the pay. And they are on pay. The government is paying a lot of doctors, nurses, technicians, who have a job about the problem may not be of so so what the point I'm trying to make is that it's not a structural issue. It's not a structural issue. You, you can create a lot of structure and you can see that there is beautiful buildings, beautiful. But other people live with nice themselves. Then there's much that can be said about that. So it all starts with a conversation. So if you look at this, these are women sitting. Not on the ground, but on the ground. But this is their VDO. VDO is a village development organization. We get all the community together, a separate organization for women and a separate organization for men. And these are their development organization. They are required to meet every month. They meet every month, they organize themselves, they define their needs, and they decide what is it that their community needs. So what does that do? That empowers them. That involves them, that makes them responsible for their own future, for their own children's education. Then they take responsibility. And, and what do we do with this? We have a community health work. And then it is detailed because it's not easy. It's not easy to get into a village and teach them to send them to school, to teach them to go get the immunization. You can have immunization. We get free vaccines. WHO is free vaccine to these countries, but nobody ever gets these vaccines. Many patients, first of all, the doctors want to go door to door, the uh, vaccinator goes to the patients in the audience, and that's to that. The vaccinator works from 9 to 2, the 
they, these are some of our children. You see, we started out with this graduate school, which was sitting on the floor. And now we have the uh, furniture in the school, and that's the transformation to the home school. Uh, all these slides are just posted. These are girls from our country. And what time you can look at in the whole country. Our enrollment rate is girls, 65% of the girls are enrolled now. We emphasize the girls' education more. Because the reason is they are boys' school, the government schools. And people don't mind their boys walking and going to the distance. People don't send their daughters. So it is better, or rather more important, to have more girls' schools so they are accessible. So the girls can actually walk, they walk to school. Because actually last uh, you know, a few months ago, I went to a school in the Lahore. You know where it is. It's a shadow, it's 45 minutes from Gurgaon. But it is not, it's just a poor village. Over there, I asked the girls, you know, what the attendance rate was. There was one girl in her grade who was 100% attendance, and she had the parts. And she, she told me, she said, hey, for her, I should be able to run out that. So I said, you know, if she can walk to school every day, I mean, that is the spirit. That is the spirit. So for girls, the accessibility of the body, there are no roads, there are no transportation. Um, this is the main library. We always have a library in our schools. See, the, and these are very schools. And you'll see, you'll see the result of all this. So learning habits are, and again, a lot of you who are from Pakistan know, there is not a library for children. Yes. So which area are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking about all the areas where our uh, projects are. Yeah. And how are our projects designed? You see, we have, these villages are, uh, we usually decide to Project has to have at least 1,000 households. Each household has about 7 or 8 people. Uh, so it's 8,000 people, but we just try to have 6 or 7 villages in a project. So in the center area, we have the school and the clinic. So these people walk and uh, they, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, whatever. But, uh, and which province is that? Is it in the town? In the region. And we really take questions. I love to answer the question because you know there's a system in it, but right? it's not easy. It's not easy. But we have thought to it. That's one more. Uh, what do you mean by non-formal schools? Uh, non-formal schools, if there are not enough children in certain area yet, then you you combine two or three grades. So you have first, second, and there is there are non-formal schools even in the United States, without the rural uh, So two or three grades, because if there are two kids in second grade and two kids in third grade. So we are not going to make so many classes because we don't have that many But once enrollment comes slowly, the first day we go there, we are not going to send their children. So it takes time. So once it becomes formal, there are more children and we train more teachers and we are able to have that form. But that structure in the school, then it becomes formal So all schools are not in the same level. Our oldest, uh, uh, oldest project is in Bata. So if you go to Bataan, you still in the education. If you go to Lahore, it's not very old, but because of our law, these people want the facility and, and they meet with other people. Uh, their level of, of uh, understanding or expectation is different. Right? For the law, so you give a name and the kind of conversation I have with the students. The rest of the girls must have it. They were upset. They couldn't go to college because they were parents who let them go. Uh, so, the way they are aware of is very different. In Bardaan, they didn't even want to uh, talk, they are so shy. So, there is a cultural difference even among the schools. Um, then the health program. Well, the health program again is very interesting because you make a little clinic, but people cannot get to this. So, we have the clinic where there is a doctor, there is a vaccinator, there is a small pharmacy where the medication is free. And uh, there is the uh, train birth attendant that I do because uh, the, uh, the deliveries are performed by the train birth attendants. And at the same time, what we have become in companies. So we also have more benefits. We have these little bags. There are proper ambulances like we have in the United States. But they are enough. It's a little bag with a baby health worker everywhere. So this van goes and it has a schedule. It parks in a certain village. So it has a schedule. So they know that the van is coming. So that's the kind of thing. And then get the treatment. 
and then door to door vaccination is the other thing we call it. So in other words, you don't expect people to come in the same way uh, because of the transportation regulation and we provide transportation to our teachers, to our leading health workers and uh, that is in fact one of the reasons why our doctors and our teachers show up for work because transportation is a big problem. How do people get to work? <laughs> and this again was in the hall. In the hall. I think of all there was uh, the headmistress had a PhD. And I was like, how are we going to get a PhD person working in our school? We don't even pay them the same level as the author. So she says, uh, because uh, very deep, very deep, very deep, very deep, very deep, very deep, So she was able to bring her four-year-old daughter with her. And she went to sit in the first year. And she was like, I can't be here as well. So, and then transportation. She said, we have one car. In fact, said, everybody has one car. She said, my husband had to get up really early, drop me off, and go there. She had to wait for her husband to finish the work and then come and pick her up. And because she had to, uh, gave them transportation, they didn't care how far they had to go. So instead of going to school in Lahore, and the village in Lahore, these the women able to show up for work every day because they gave them the transportation. So these are some of these social issues that we were able to identify what the community and uh, wants to address them, things happen. Uh, this is another very interesting problem. Uh, we have somebody who we think was visiting and we noticed that some of the kids don't see the black zone. That's what you see in the eyesight. Nobody ever looked at the eyesight. We do not have a vision program in Pakistan like we do here. Here, first grade and fifth grade, every kid gets their vision screen in school. Like so we he was able to procure these glasses and uh, it's, it's a very, it is a, the, the Chinese came up with this one the chart that you are able to use and the total cost of these glasses is $1.99. So this, this was a huge, uh, I think, positive impact of some of these students who are now able to see and then of course it is covered by some teachers being uh, then we have cultural things. These are all the kinds of things that we offer to our children. Teacher capacity building again, we train our teachers. And there is a short training course that we have in this now part. But at least they are able to go back to their villages because these are village girls, they show up to work every day. You have something to go to And with all this, this is the metric result. And uh, you can see that it is 91% first division, first division is 60%. So our children did do so well because they are not distracted. And these numbers, again I asked, this was presented in Pakistan, I asked them, is this just the village people who want this? And no, this is the vote which means that all of these children uh, in, in that vote, but the different vote, I think even in Punjab, there are two or three votes. Uh, this is the result of the HDF children. This is another uh, um, program that we have discussed it already uh, with a uh, few um, supporters there. This is called the HDF scholarship. This is actually an endowed scholarship. And, uh, and if somebody wants to recognize or to start a scholarship with their parents saying, you know, does this to recognize somebody? They can put the ten thousand dollars in the endowment, and the income from that is used every year to give scholarship to students in schools of their choice. It doesn't have to be an education school; it can be any school uh, because a lot of people have come from different schools. They just, they just want to get back to their school. Actually, uh, nobody is here from the Edward. The Edward uh, Medical College had for the alumnus, and that's what we got the idea. And the first few months is also is a position. Uh, who manages this for us. It is very passionate about it. Uh, we have, uh, this tells you how many uh, scholarships we have. So anybody who is interested in starting a scholarship, uh, they can definitely log on to our website and all the details are there. This is again most uh, more, uh, more details about the vaccination and the postnatal care. The, we have nine HDF healthcare centers, as I said, each of the centers has one main doctor. Um, and uh, some the male doctors are calling them doctor, male doctors are hard to find because the name is a doctor. Uh, this is one of my uh, favorite programs. 
God who means it not. It is deals with the mother and child development. And just like this said, uh, we've been talking for an hour or so, another woman is that. Woman is trying to be out. Um, this is a program, and it's a very simple program. What it does is it's antenatal care. And uh, if the women are taken care of during pregnancy, in a way where their health and nutrition is watched, if there's any complication, we refer them out. And uh, we need to make sure that the uh, mother is vaccinated. There's a lot of girls, but the young girls, they just come off the test because somebody's in the left in the delivery and can't say bad. So these deaths are so preventable that you look at them. Uh, every day, 27 women die during pregnancy. And in our program, death is anyone want to get zero. We have lost no woman in We have uh, our guys identify them, they send them off. And that would make me get them in the law. Because these women are close to all these things. So we have not had single death because these are preventable deaths. No one should die in childhood. But uh, because uh, enough care is not taken, I think it is a sad figure uh, that uh, has been ignored. But here is what we have been able to do. So if you look at this, there is the infant mortality rate and there is the underlying mortality rate. And if you see, in Pakistan, this is the reported number, 81. 81 deaths per 100,000 uh, live births. That is under five. And HDR, over the years, has been able to take it from 80. Now the red is HDR. Green is Pakistan. So it is Pakistan mortality rate for infant mortality and for the uh, uh, child mortality has stayed about the same, maybe a little uh, better. The HDR has really slowed down. And now we have 28. That is a figure that is better than what was the Canadian goals. Hepatitis B is another thing we do. There are all these little things that are the community. You can do it if you have the staff, if you have the uh, willpower of the people to take care of themselves and they understand the importance of the Sustainable environment again. Why do we do this? Because you have to have all these so you can look at that. Over 2,000 community physics are constructed. Four dams. We have made four delay action dams in Balochistan. Uh, Why did we do it? Because there was a drought and then there was a flood. And it's sad. Sometimes you have so much water that all their uh, animals die because they drown. And that's, that is drought in their animals die. People that. So all we have to do is just water management. So we had these dams built at one quarter of the budget that the government was proposing. How are we able to do that? We got the community. So why do they? They are there. They need the water. They understand the importance of water for agriculture. And we have before and after to be that we have. But uh, we are very proud of those four dams. And we do plan in China to make the three or four more dams in the Bushar area. Uh, this is for the Pindy So we are doing uh, also because they, you know, it's an agricultural area and people need to water and farmers drink uh, the taste of life. We have uh, the 60 water filtration plants to make water in the products as a hand pumps. Then solar energy is another area that we have been able to tap into and the various areas such as this uh, school. Uh, we have electricity in lot of places, but if you don't have electricity, you can use solar energy. Uh, and in Pakistan, they saw on sun. There's no way to be a living Oh, here's my Gadakari. Uh, <laughs> so, this is the documentary part, and uh, this is my Gadakari. Um, this is our military plantation, aimed for the environment. Our school children are required to plant trees. Um, as a social service So I went there. I also the back of Here's a picture again in the water management area. So if you look at these women, uh, what they are doing is they are pulling water from the well. This is inside the park. The park is a ground ship. And it takes so many women, hours and hours and hours, first to walk to the well. Then they pull it out. Then the water they get is there. So what we have 
he said, what do you do? He said, I'm going to work with the pressure pump. And that's a solar pump, work with the pressure pump. Uh, and it also tells you the three minutes of uh, those farmers, the needs, the partner, and the So those three they will be able to provide water to uh, the communities. And you can see how it really has changed their life. Uh, here is the main song. Uh, you can see the dam pump. On the right side is that dam. And the middle you see the water pump. And the other one is, is called Kanis Ayanta. Uh, that is an irrigation canal that you make so that the water can actually get to the crops and the farmers can, of course, the crops. Uh, these are some of the economic development economics that we have. Uh, we have efficient gardening, again, for better nutrition. The farmers are educated for the water management as well as the agriculture and know how. They are educated on livestock management and livestock vaccination. Because if you are selling them and you know how diet, you will get a pasture hiding. So vaccination of the animals are also very important. This is again more picture of the garden and uh, livestock management education because the best people know how to uh, take care of their animals uh, and obviously is going to die. This is uh, in Bolivia, we have this uh, sewing garment industry kind of thing where they make clothes and they sell it in the local market. We have not been able to bring our clothes to the Nepalis yet. I look at all these clothes from India that are sitting in the Nepalis and Macy's and so I think we can definitely improve this enterprise to be a more retail This is one of our uh, very old, this is the Parna. So this is the vocational training school where we train uh, auto mechanics and electricians and plumbers. So this is the vocational training that we give. It's usually, uh, some of them are three month courses, some of them are year courses. But we definitely get these people uh, in Hamilton to prepare them and they will sell them to prepare the city center. So with all this, as you can see, um, we have been in and we can make this more nice. And I always feel very proud that we've been able to meet out to two million people. 2,700 villages, but one or the other. It's just a problem about starting us. But that doesn't mean we don't do what we are doing. Uh, what we are hoping for is to go back to the mission. The mission was to start a social policy. It's a movement. Unless people take charge, unless everybody joins in, unless they start doing it themselves, we in the United States cannot do that much. We can teach them to fish. We can to give them a fish. So one of the other uh, uh, discussions that we were having with the table over there was how to make the organization sustainable. So the way we have tried to make the organization sustainable is you have the endowment fund. Right now, we have the endowment fund about 2.5 million. Because I think the time to come grows, we should be able to at least use that for the administrative costs. So at that time, we will be able to say 100% of your dollars, 20 dollars at the Because there is an overhead, there is a cost of the business. Huh? These are some of the, 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 the dollar amounts that can be used to make a to see how far your dollars go. So if you look at the 24,000 sports in the school, that means just 20,000 a month that the school is supported. And for the teacher's salary, just look at that, $2,000 is the salary for the whole year for the teacher. Uh, similarly, in the uh, informal schools and the libraries out there. So in other words, no matter what you do, whether you give $1,000 or you give $100, it will go to one of these programs. And what you can do is when you make a donation, you can all this also specify where you want your donation to go. Uh, of course, all your donations will be going to the general fund, but we have some major donors. There are people who come and who want to do something specific in the village. We always get this call. There was one call in Gujarat. Uh, that family in their village at the school, the GCFA at school, and uh, they didn't have that yet. So they said that they need a campaign again, and we are happy to do that. If the community already has a school, there's no need for us to go to the school. So those are the communities where you go and just complement what's there already. So that's why I think it's called a holistic model. We cannot do not We don't need to. It's not 
communities. It's a community needs something that's what they do. So uh, in that case, we spend $5,000 is the annual cost. And some communities do that. We have community in Seattle that said, oh, we just, uh, just take care of the water bottles. So they have to cover the community and have to raise a lot of money. I think they said $5,000. But it's the community. We should really pass the same so in other words, you can just pick and choose where you think your dollar should be spent, where your heart is, and that's where the money will go. One of our very careful um, uh, the gift of water is something that a lot of people like to participate in. We just have the talking about up now. We talk about up now. We should have a local chapter. So that can if you donate a big thing, some stuff that people can get together and make a donation just to own a project. So if you promise to find a whole project, you get your donation, you get your education there. Some people like to do that. And uh, so that would be one way of participating. And uh, we get a lot of uh, requests for the handbox. Two hundred and seventy dollars will get your handbox. And that handbox will be dedicated to your uh, parents, to your friends, to your wife. That can be nice anniversary gift. Don't give a diamond ring, give a handbook. So, any anniversary is coming up, how many handbooks are we getting today? Um, and then, uh, I always look at this as a very easy thing to do. These are 12 years in 12 months. What it is, we have to remember poverty is living under $1 a day. If you are living for under $1 Dollars a day, that's thirty dollars a month. You actually are addressing the need of farm time. So that is, uh, and we are concerned <coughs> because uh, what these, these villages we all find we have families that are extremely poor. So our staff will actually identify these poor families and we just have to into them. And again, we have this uh, policy that any money that we have to start to like start in that, that is used before the fiscal year ends. So the problem is we don't. That's about it. So, uh, our policy is very strict about this first time. And if you want to give a recurring donation, you can put it on the credit card or you put it uh, automatically that that way for you to give it to your uh, checking account. But recurring donations really are very uh, important for our organization to sustain. And uh, that's all.
on the projects, and it's eleven cents a dollar. You have a management fee on that.